Today, we're gonna explore even more new Blender add-ons and updates that have just hit the scene like a flood. We've got a list covering everything from water simulation and building assets to procedural generation, animation, scattering, and more. But before we continue, I want to remind you guys that we are going through the Black Friday to Cyber Monday sale. So this is a great opportunity to get yourself some of the best add-ons, courses, shaders, you name it. Especially on the Blender market, because they are having a big discount of up to 30%, and other developers even more than that. And if you don't know where to start, I have in the description of this video a list of the top Blender add-ons and courses that you will ever need. Without further ado, let's jump right into the video. More likely than not, you know what GeoScatter is. Well, it is one of the go-to add-ons for scattering in Blender. And with the 5.5 update, it brings new tools to refine the scattering workflow. Many people choose to use it because it is great for dense setup and large terrains. And this update offers some thoughtful improvements. The busy area and busy spline distribution methods are worth highlighting. Busy area lets you scatter with a curve's boundary. On the other hand, busy spline works along the curve, even allowing for pathways. And both methods include surface projection, which helps with larger terrains. Though overly detailed scattering on vast areas might still require careful adjustments to avoid slowdowns or even crashes. The update also introduces empty distribution for scattering objects from a collection, which I think suits procedural setups really well. You also have new manual tools, like the line and turbulence brushes, which makes fine-tuning by hand feel more intuitive. Add to that it tweaks to camera optimizations and ecosystem density, and you've got better control for complex scenes without any unnecessary complexities. Still with the topic of creating environments, we have a new add-on called Water VFX Master. We all know that creating water takes a lot of time and effort. In this case, I want to talk about this water simulation add-on from Lazy3D. Water VFX Master is, in a nutshell, a real-time fluid effects add-on that offers some good and fast water effects and simulations that you can use inside your projects. The add-on offers everything from simple droplets to dynamic waterfall generators, and it also has some realistic physics and collision effects, and controls to adjust the strength, density, and velocity of water, in addition to other stuff. The add-on also offers many presets for you to use if you want to add a waterfall or a shower head directly without any further adjustments. In addition, it also has a split render for cycles and EV, which can be used to render large scenes. Well, the element also has some drawbacks, as dense and complex water scenes may take a long time to render in cycles, so it is advised to render real-time water with EV in those cases. Generally speaking, the quality of the water simulations is also not the best when it comes to close-up shots. They can work great to create convincing water illusions, which are ideal for mid-range shots or backdrop shots, but not really for close-up water simulation shots. And despite these limitations, this add-on is an effective tool for creating convincing water effects in Blender, in my opinion. Many of you guys may know the next add-on called Light Wrangler, as it is one of the most popular add-ons when it comes to lighting. If you ever worked with Blender before, especially when reaching the lighting part, you might get a little frustrated trying to position the lights. Blender does a lot of things in the right way, but when it comes to light controls, it kind of falls short. They are clunky and require manual adjustments and positioning which takes time, and I believe this can be done better. So Light Wrangler has some really needed features to control and position lights. It adds a light that follows the mouse cursor position, giving you precise and fast control on where to pull the light. You can also orbit, isolate, link, adjust the size and the strength of the light, and you can do all of that in a very short period of time. The add-on also offers some gobo effects and SDRIs for some added realism, and with its latest update, it just resolved some issues in Blender 4.3, especially when it comes to EV. LensSim is another new Blender add-on that brings real-world lens behavior to Blender. 
You can mess around with vintage, anamorphic, or wide angle lenses, adjusting things like aperture, size, focus distance, and chromatic aberration. One thing I found interesting is how tweaking the sensor width lets you see the full illumination circle of a lens. You can also play with the bokeh shapes or add some distortion, like barrel or pinch cushion effects, to get the look that you're after. Another interesting thing is the option to load actual lenses data from schematics. And I have to admit that some of the features might seem way too technical for those of you who don't have basic knowledge of photography because the add-on talks about lots of technical stuff. That said, there are a few limitations to note. Lens sim supports Blender 4.2, 4.3, and Cycles Render Engine only, and handling spherical and cylindrical lenses with a 15 lens element cap. Optical veneering affects AOV passes like depth and mist, darkening edges, and the smaller lenses like the 50mm Zeiss Hologon may face precision issues. So stick to the lens sim panel for adjustments to keep things stable. From what I can see, this add-on is really great for people who do photography or when it comes to VFX work. And this add-on, as I can see, is really, really important because people seem to have a lot of interest in it and they are buying it like hot cakes. So you probably need to take a look at it, look at the page and all the details they have to talk about. Cause I can't do it justice in just a couple of minutes. Another interesting new add-on is called Rubbleit, which is a procedural rubble generator that helps you add debris like trash, concrete, wood, and more stuff to your scene with less effort. And I think it is useful if you need to quickly fill environments with debris. Say for example, for architectural visualization or larger scenes where adding rubble by hand would be something silly and can take forever. It turns around three modes to work with. It has three modes that you can work with. AO mode for corners and crevices and field mode for scattering across a defined area. It's best to use an empty volume for this one. And lastly, the weight paint mode for controlling distribution based on weight painting. You can mix these modes together for control over how the rubbles are spaced or placed. And it is pretty easy to use. Just add your object to a collection, apply the modifier, and tweak the sliders to get the right amount of placement. The recent updates to geometry nodes make it even more consistent. And overall, I think this one is a good option if you want to save time and some of your sanity. Another new interesting add-on is called Breakdown Maker. Working in Blender or 3D in general can take a lot of time, between modeling, texturing, animating, and rendering, which can leave you sometimes too tired most of the time to showcase your work. And while it is a necessary part, if you want to get your hard work out there, it is sometimes tedious. Well, Diffuse Studio just released a new add-on called Breakdown Maker, and it may be the thing you need to help you get your work out there for the public to see. This add-on simply does what its name suggests. It breaks down your work into different elements, simplifying the process of making show reels. And it offers some interesting animation presets to showcase how the scene is put together. It also offers features like turntable, lighting scheme, different HDRIs, studio light assets, and texturing options to switch between standard, wireframe, and solid color. The add-on also offers features like a render passes menu and a render manager for more control. When it comes to animation, we have a new animation add-on called Animate Pro. As you may know, the animation system of Blender has always been kind of outdated and lacks a lot of features that we can find in software such as Maya. And this add-on called Animate Pro, although it is still in early access, it promises to fix the Blender animation system, making it more manageable. The tool has been in close development with animators from Disney, Pixar, and DreamWorks for a while. But this is what it says on the page. These are definitely not my words. Anyways, the add-on has a variety of new tools to add to the animation system for Blender, like a timeline scrubbing shortcut by holding space, and you can add a lattice and proportionality scale to selected keyframes. You also have an option to add pins to adjust the timing of keyframes, keyframe sculpting, a new editor sub-bar, some cleanup tools, and a lot more. Well, to be exact, this add-on has lots of features. I mean a lot. It can also be said that this is one of the most advanced animation add-ons in Blender. 
well, come into Blender at least, because it is still in early access. And from what I can see, this add-on can be worth the wait when it is fully released. So hopefully it's gonna be a game changer in animation inside Blender. Only time will tell. And there you have it guys. If you are interested in these new add-ons, you will find all the necessary links in the description. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to this channel if you want to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.